Mob Psycho breaks the internet once again. Some dubs are coming to some exciting titles. The pandemic rears its ugly head once again in the anime sphere. Ad support may be coming to Netflix sooner than expected, and we have a ton of news surrounding some anime getting adaptations in this news bit. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, definitely stay tuned. For our first bit of news, yes, let's get the exciting thing out of the way. The reason that most people are clicking this video. Mob Psycho 100 had released a new trailer for its third season, and yes, it pretty much broke the internet. Trending on Twitter, I think it was, its trailer was some Somewhere up in the tens of the actual trending on YouTube. Obviously, the series has always had a huge fandom behind it. But the exciting thing that came from this trailer, and probably the reason why it got so much hype, is that it is announced when the series will actually premiere, and that is October. So, yes, set your calendar. October, fall season, Mob Psycho 100 season three will be releasing. So, if October and the fall season wasn't exciting enough for you, let's add some more. Like this is an insane year for anime. Let's just make that absolutely clear. I need to make a new video here soon just talking about how I already have my top list for anime of the year already filling up and summer and fall is looking nuts. Me personally, it took the second season before I started falling in love with Mob Psycho 100, so I'm definitely excited to see where this writer takes this series going forward. It's it's hopefully nothing but uphill from here. Moving on to our next bit of news, Netflix has revealed that Polygon Pictures, for those who don't know, has done things like Night Sidonia, Ajin, a lot of fantastic titles that I personally have loved. It's one of the only CGI studios that I just adore besides maybe Orange. But yes, Netflix has announced that Polygon Pictures will be actually be working on one of the upcoming segments for the third volume of Love, Death, and Robots animated series. The title for the segment will be The Very Pulse of the Machine, and they describe it as when an exploratory expedition on the surface of the moon, Eo ends in disaster, an astronaut must trek to safety, dragging the body of her co-pilot while using potentially mind-warping drugs to deal with the pain of her own injuries in a trippy tribute to comic book legend Mobius. Now, this is really exciting for me because I've only really dabbled a little bit in a couple of the segments of Love, Death, and Robots, but it's really an interesting kind of take. I guess I would kind of describe it as something like uh, a shorts, different shorts telling different stories. And yes, kind of similar to the synopsis, always takes some really interesting routes. So... If you're interested in that series, definitely check out at least their particular one. I, I had some people at some point say, hey, check out this episode, this episode, this episode, and I kind of jumped to those and really enjoy them. So they're, I think they're kind of hit and miss, but definitely check this one out. Give give uh, Polygon Pictures some love. Moving on, the staffing for the live action series for The Way of the House Husband has announced that the series will be getting a six-part special that will premiere in Japan on May 27th. I'm not sure if Netflix will be immediately picking up after that point, but I would assume so, because it really does seem like Netflix really loves Kendra Suda, just like I do. <laughs> but uh, the new special is set one and a half years after the final episode of the live action series. So it's kind of a continuation that'll cover a couple different stories. I've actually gone and checked out the live actions and they're really good. I Granted, Kendra Suda is mostly known for his voicing roles. He does pull off the character in reality really well. He technically is an embodiment of that character, let's be perfectly honest. So... It was a lot of fun watching those. They did a couple of them that were basically based off of the manga itself. So it was a lot of fun. I do enjoy them. I do love Kendra Suda. So I'll probably check in this out. Moving on to some dub news. We have some people in our community that are absolutely sold on dubs. So I'm excited to know that High Dive has announced that they will begin streaming an English dub for The Executioner and her way of life starting on May 20th. So definitely set your calendars for that. If you're a dub fan, I highly recommend this series. I've been enjoying it a lot. I do episode by episode impressions on it. So as you watch it, go ahead and check out those videos as well. They also announced that following episodes will be releasing on Friday. So definitely exciting news. Happy for dub fans. Definitely check that series out. Additionally, some more dub news out of High Dive is they finally have confirmed <laughs> this big mystery that has been surrounding Teasing Master Takagi-san. For those that don't know, Essentially, they had the original first season was actually dubbed by Funimation. And then for some reason, Netflix said, hey, let's grab the second season and dub it ourselves. Well, High Dive has officially started releasing dub episodes for season three of TZ Master Takagi-san. And it looks like they are going with the Funimation cast. So you'll have a weird thing with the second season, but at least we'll get back to normality for a lot of people. I don't know if people prefer one or the other, but hopefully dub fans got what they wanted. Maybe eventually if Netflix ever drops the second season, High Dive can pick it up and redub that as well so that we can get at least a, a consistent <laughs> release of the seasons. Moving on, the Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten anime adaptation has released some additional information 
information. And this comes in a teaser visual that was released, which announces that the series will be coming in 2023. So quite a ways away, at least half a year away. But anybody that's excited for that series, I'm definitely glad for you. Of course, project number nine will be working on this series. The synopsis is Amane lives alone in an apartment and the most beautiful girl in school, Mahiru, lives just next door. They've almost never spoken until the day he sees her in distress on a rainy day and lends her an umbrella. To return his favor, she offers to help him around the house and a relationship slowly begins to blossom as the distance between them closes, which I'm guessing she's gonna start spoiling him. <laughs> so sounds really cute. The art looks fantastic. I cannot wait for this series. It, 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 it already has my attention. Following a previous news bit that I released, yes, we had this whole discussion that was coming out of the Netflix CEO uh, Reed Hastings, which was talking about the possibility of adding ad support to Netflix. Well, it looks like at least based on the New York Times article they released that Netflix may be adding ad support in a low costing tier between October and December of this year. So not very far away, which doesn't really surprise me too much. It sounds like it's something that they technically feel like they drastically have to do in order to keep them from constantly bleeding uh, subscribers, even though they still have a ton. They don't want to see that downward trend because like I said before, that's a lot of money. I mean, what they've already announced and what they're saying they can possibly projecting, we're talking 40 million plus dollars a month they're losing. So this is kind of something they need to patch up quickly. But the other interesting thing is this memo apparently also has some additional information in that. And that is that they are mentioning that they're going to be cracking down on password sharing during that same time. So if you're currently sharing password with somebody just keep in mind that around that time, you're gonna start seeing things pop. I'm sure they'll probably announce something at some point, maybe that they will ban you if you do share your account information. I'm not sure why they would do that because then they would technically lose another sub, but they might slap a hand in order to keep everybody else's hands away. So we'll see how that one turns out. I know that they've already been kind of rolling out some, some sort of things in other countries where if you are sharing out your password, you have to pay an additional cost. I'm certain that was a test bed for it. And that'll probably something we'll see worldwide eventually. How dare you share your password for that $20 a month subscription, jeez. Moving on to some more positive news. <laughs> Shueisha has announced that Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible manga will be getting an anime adaptation. Super exciting. They've already announced a studio, which will be Studio Pine Jam. And the synopsis is first year high schooler Junta Shiraishi is a mob character who goes around unnoticed even when he's standing right next to you. But his classmate, Heroin level beauty Kubo always notices him there and teases him. Anyone can become special to someone, but it might be a little bit too early to call these feelings love. Perhaps this story is still two steps from being romantic comedy. Let's call it a sweet comedy where a background character becomes visible. Sounds super cute. The artwork already looks fantastic. I cannot wait for this series. So definitely stay tuned and I'll let you guys know whenever I get a date for that. Moving back to some unfortunate news. <laughs> I just said I was getting into positive news, but yes, it looks like the pandemic has reared its head once again. The official website for Shikimori is not just a cutie has announced another delay and not just another delay, but two delays. For those who don't know, Dogokobo recently had some rapid testings happening and they were seeing a huge increase in cases within their actual studios. So they kind of had to shut down their offices for a little bit. We really didn't see any sort of immediate effect coming from that. I think we had one episode delayed. Well, it does look like probably because of that, they're now trying to get caught back up. And so they're having to push back episodes, not multiple weeks, but it looks like they're kind of staggering delays in order to get caught up. So what this means, episode six will air on May 14th, just as scheduled. However, episode seven and episode nine will see a one week delay. They did announce that they were going to be putting a episode one replay with a audio commentary over it, which we'll probably see on Crunchyroll as well. But just expect that the following week, episode seven will be delayed a week. And then when we get around to episode nine, it'll have a delay. So that means episode seven on the 28th and episode nine on June 18th. It's unfortunate, but like I said before, my expectation was that because of that pretty much almost two weeks that they were looking at delaying and having their studio shut down. I was totally convinced that because they already had two delays before that they were just going to push it off to the next season. So the fact that they're still going pretty solid. I just hope everybody there is safe and that anybody inflicted gets a quick recovery. There's nothing more important to the fandom, honestly, that they are safe and that they are taken care of. The delays are fine <laughs> as long as they're safe. Piggybacking off of that discussion about the pandemic, we also got some unfortunate news around Maya Uchida. Her talent agency has unfortunately announced that she has been tested positive. So if anybody is a huge fan like myself of Maya Uchida, make sure to send out your love, your prayers, everything. Just get the message out there and just 
show that love. I hope this goes by her quickly and that she sees a quick recovery. And finally, for our last bit of news, we have G Kids and Shout Factory have announced their plans for releasing Pompo the Cinephile anime film. This is following their theatrical release, which according to a lot of people in our community, it sounds like it turned out to be fantastic. And there's a lot of people excited to hear my thoughts on it. But unfortunately, I've never been able to get to theaters around here that have these, these anime movies. So it's the unfortunate thing, but I'll be excited when this comes out, which is the Blu-ray, which will be releasing on July 12th. It will be a Blu-ray DVD combo. And additionally, if you don't want a physical copy of it, you can get it early on June 28th. So that's fantastic. I always love when G Kids and Shout Factory do their double dipping releases, but it is what it is. For those unfamiliar with the movie, it follows Pompo, the talented and gutsy producer whose love of cinema is unflinching and unapologetic. One day, Pompo turns her uncanny eye for talent to her movie loving, but apprehensive assistant, Jean, selecting him to make his directorial debut with her latest script. But Jean has his work cut out for him, with a young Scarlet looking for her big break and a legendary aging Brondo-like superstar in front of a camera. It's not an action movie, but Pompo's breakneck pace combined with the high stakes of creative fulfillment pack in as much excitement as standard superhero fare. Add to that the slew of insider movie references and countless winks and nods of the filmmaking process. This hilarious and heartfelt dramedy has what it takes to fulfill even your wildest cellular dreams. Holy, what kind of freaking synopsis is that? Anyways, I hate reading synopsis sometimes. Jeez. Anyway, that's all I have for this news bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button and share this video. It does help us out the most. If you can share it out to your friends, any clicks that I can get is fantastic. Additionally, down in the comments below, let me know what you're most excited about and if it's not Mob Psycho 100. <laughs> Additionally, if you want to support us more, we have a Patreon link and a tips link in the description below. We definitely appreciate everybody that supports us. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already. And y'all take care. It's not an action movie, but Pompo's breakneck pace combined with her high stakes of creating fulfillment pact is... What?